out of Houston, Texas, fighting on the Ramirez Hooker card here. Um, how is uh, we we last caught up in uh, Madison Square Garden? Epic night for yourself, uh, a historic boxing night. What the Ruiz Joshua upset? Um, what what has been going on with you uh, since then? And uh, how has this training camp been? And uh, tell us about this fight here on uh, on Saturday. This has been. My like 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 everybody says everybody says this but seriously it's the truth this has been my greatest camp yet um i got a lot of work from actually the team from france that's here i, f I forget the fighter that they have but um they had a 154 pounder and a 160 pounder come down to houston come down to maine i got good two weeks of sparring with those guys then i went to la um sam got me out to la we got some really good sparring with some 10 and 0, 11 and 0, uh, 18 and 2, babyface uh, pros, and I, I really got a lot of experience in this camp. Uh, my trainers, Dwight and Bobby Benton, uh, they've been working on kind of slowing me down and and teaching me how to distribute my weight a little bit better, um, and also giving me more combinations that allow me to keep the punches rolling. And uh, I've been able to land a lot cleaner shots in my sparring. I've been hurting guys very easy in my sparring um, just by relaxing and slowing down a bit. Um, I'm really seeing the effects of taking it a bit slower and slowing down the pace. I'm seeing the importance of slowing down the pace in, um, you know, in a professional ranks. That's a very, that's a serious thing. Um, a lot of people think, you know, even though it's four round fights, you should, since it's four round fights, you should keep the pace real high and stuff like that. But I'm learning, no, you still should slow down and learn how to find those shots. So when the fights get longer, six, eight, ten round fights, you know how to preserve yourself and find critical shots uh, rather than just a lot of throwaway punches, you know what I mean, and burn out your gas tank. So with that being said, I know that was a lot, but that's what's been going on with me in, in this camp. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we were just having a conversation off camera here um, just about this Texas wave and what's going on out here. You know, uh, obviously we're in Dallas, the home of Errol Spence. Uh, you're from Houston. You know, you got the Charlos. We got a lot of things going on in the sport of, in, in Texas right now. Just could you just speak on the on the wave that Texas is on and um, and um, and how, how you want to be a significant part of that moving forward? Um, Texas has been significant in the last couple of uh, years, you know what I mean? We got a lot of world champions, and uh, I was lucky enough to be in main boxing gym with one of the current world champions, Regis Progre. Um, and I got to train alongside him, and I got to kind of see the lifestyle and how it should be of a, of a successful boxer. And uh, that was real great for me because the majority of fighters don't take boxing as serious as they should. So when you get lucky enough, it's Eddie. It's, it's the main <laughs> man right here. This is the main man. Yes. Future world champ, Hello, yeah. Williams. Yes, sir. But when you get a great example like um, Regis Progre and you get to share the gym with that guy, um, it really helps. So I'm happy to be in Texas, and I, I know I'm a true product of Texas boxing. And uh, what I want to do is – I want to be better than all the Texas boxers. I want to bring more to the table than just the fighting. Um, we're very powerful fighters, as everybody knows. That's what we bring to the table. Power, great fundamentals, uh, slick skills, things like that. But I want to bring everything, the persona, the inside and outside, um, personality. Um, and I just want to be the best boxer, period. And I want to you know, really push Texas boxing ahead even further. Obviously, we just uh, we just crossed paths with Eddie Hearn there. Just declared you a future champion. Uh, what, what does it mean to have a, a guy of Eddie's stature and just match room behind you? Um, it, it definitely boosts your confidence. Um, you have to stay humble. You have to remember that you know what got you here was definitely hard work, consistent work. Uh, sacrifice things of that nature that's the only reason why I get those statements and I get um, reminded of who I can be but it's a reminder of who I can be and uh, who I will be if I continue to work hard so it, it boosts my confidence it gives me more fuel extra energy to go harder spend that extra time in the gym and uh, stay dedicated but it doesn't make me forget what, what really counts in this sport, which is dedication, hard work, sacrifice. 
And uh, the boxing world has been hot. You know, we were out in Vegas for the Pacquiao Thurman card. Uh, did you see that fight by Eddie Chess? What were your thoughts on the Pacquiao fight? I didn't get to see the fight. I never went to watch the whole fight, but what I said was going to happen, happened. <laughs> Pacquiao is a legend, dude. And, uh, you know, I was just basically, you know, Thurman's last performance wasn't great. Pacquiao's last performance was outstanding. He knows he's coming to the end of his career. Um, so I think all of his preparation for his fights is going to be keen, sharp, and um, extremely just it's going to be tactical and perfect um he knows he knows how he has to train he's been here before he's fought guys like mayweather and things like that i don't think it's nothing that keith thurman could have brought to the table that he did, hasn't seen before and and in this case experience was definitely going to play a huge part in the fight and it did and i, I believe pacquiao could have got that fight unanimously and, uh, you know, him and, F him and Floyd have been exchanging the jabs on, on social media. It's been quite entertaining for, for, for the fans. Um, is, do, do you think, as a fan of the sport as well, would you want to see that rematch? Or if those guys just kind of passed their, if they passed their prime, but would you want to see the rematch still? Is there, is there demand for the rematch? Um, <laughs> is it top of my list to see? No. But would I be excited to see it? Yes. Um, that's where you pull out the chess board. You're going to see a chess, chess match in there, and uh, that's good for the cerebral side, you know, for the guys, the fighters who really use their mind and different uh, strategies and tactics and things of that nature. That's going to be a beautiful fighter for us real boxing fans to watch. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see it as far as, like, something powerful, explosive knockouts and things of that nature. No, I'm, it's, it's not the best one to see, but... For me, wanting to be a veteran someday of the caliber of a Mayweather or Pacquiao, that's something that I need to see. That's like studying. That's um, fundamental studies. You know, that's where you got to go sit down and, and just really, you know, watch two masters at work. You know, watch two masters at work. So I'd be excited to see it. Last one for you before we get you out of here is, is um, you know, speaking of the legends, what are, and this is a question I wanted to ask you in New York, I forgot, we forgot to ask you, is what are some of the guys that you study um, and have uh, studied coming up that you just enjoy watching, guys that you, you know, potentially like to model your game after? Um, the first fighter that I took interest in watching him was Roy Jones Jr. Um, I based a lot of my athleticism, you know, and a lot of moves that I, I could do was mimicking him. Um, and then I like Triple G just because of the power shots and the brutality that he brings. Um, but I also watched a lot of Mayweather. I watched Pernell Whitaker. I've watched, uh, this is weird, but I've watched a lot of Evander Holyfield. Um, I learned a lot from Evander Holyfield. Tito Trinidad, I watched him to, make, to mimic my head movement over him because that might be one of my weakest points right now is head movement but I'm so young in the game I'm not worried about it I know that if I'm conscious of it I can get it down we working on it but Tito Trinidad you know he has that consistent um rhythmic head movement and he can switch it up and catch you off of catch you with that hook off a slip and you're done so uh it's it's legends like that Bernard Hopkins I learned a lot from him I learned from him how to do more with less and um, it's a lot. It's actually so many. I mean, Lomachenko, he's not even out of the game yet, but I like to watch him and mimic him. But you know what? Roy Jones is always my favorite boxer. I actually met him and got to know him. I went to the um, Roy Jones Jr. tournament, got three knockouts back to back, um, and Roy Jones came to the championship fight and watched me fight. Um, and that was amazing. After the fight, we exchanged numbers and. Actually, I could have signed with Roy, but I got a, you know, a great offer from Eddie. So I, <laughs> he right. I got a great offer from him. So um, that was the route I chose to go. But we still real friends, and I can go out there and train with him in Florida. Um, I'm one of his fight, favorite fighters now. So um, yeah, that's that's a that's a good story for you right there. Appreciate the time. Thank you, sir. Good luck this weekend.